Welcome to part two of building a high voltage arc generator. In this video, we're actually going to be going through how to build the circuit itself. Uh, if you'd like to learn just about how it works and see it play some music and other cool things like that, go watch the previous video. This video is going to be going through more wiring diagrams and talking about construction of the circuit. I'm going to show you a couple of different circuits I use to make a couple of different music players. So there's a lot of bad things that can happen building something like this. You can get electrocuted, uh, high voltage arcs uh, running for a long time generate ozone and you can uh, that's toxic to you over a period of time. Uh, the noise levels are very high, this, this is very loud. You can also easily destroy any electronics that are within the vicinity of the high voltage arc as well as whatever's providing that input signal to the uh, circuit that's making the high voltage coil go. It can have high voltage shoot back and destroy it. So there, there's a lot of things that can happen. Um, I can give you some precautions. I can run you through some of the things that I did, but overall a good foundational understanding on how this stuff works and having some personal experience in doing this is really going to be the most valuable tool that you can have. It's nothing that I can actually provide for you in this video. I'm sorry, but I can definitely show you what I did to make this work. All right, so first let's look at a basic ignition coil and what it is and how do we make it make a high voltage arc. So here's a quick crash course on how ignition coils work and step up voltages in general. So we're gonna have two different coils of wire, our primary and our secondary. And if we're trying to raise the voltage, then our primary coil is gonna have less windings than our secondary. So when we put power through the primary coil, it saturates, creates electromagnetic field. Again, think of this as stored energy. When it collapses, that stored energy can be induced into things around it. So if there's another coil there, for example, then the uh, magnetic field will cut across the coils and it will induce current flow into the secondary coil. So since there is a large number of windings in the secondary coil, we're gonna have a proportional change in voltage. To actually expand and collapse the electromagnetic field, we need to turn on and off the primary coil. That way the magnetic field is moving across the secondary. So we can do this with a switch. We can either have the switch on our power or our ground side. Either way, it just stops the flow of current. And I built you a little example of that right here. I just connected a switch to this ignition coil. But if we wanted to do signal or something that was more than just pushing a button, we're gonna have to put in a transistor. And a transistor, you think of it like a switch that we can control with an input signal. And that input signal will essentially just turn on and off the transistor at whatever the frequency of the input signal is. So just for fun and to demonstrate this, I took a file and I put 12 volts on it and I ran the signal wire across that file. Uh, that way it made and break the contact over and over again and it created kind of a cool kind of pattern with the spark, a kind of cool noise. And this demonstrates it pretty well. So now we need a control circuit for the primary windings on that coil. And for that control circuit, we're gonna use something called a transistor. So the transistor is essentially just going to amplify whatever the signal is that it receives. So for example, you know, when you play an electric guitar, like that guy back there, it's it signals very quiet, it's very small. It needs to be amplified up to a point where you can hear it nice and clearly coming through the amp. And that's what a lot of the electronic circuitry is doing. So now let's take a look at the signal as it comes out from a amplifier to a source. So uh, just going to this little speaker here, you can see on the little oscilloscope screen, the signal's bouncing up and down pretty quickly. So whenever it goes up, it's pushing current. Whenever it goes down, it's pulling current. So it's making that diaphragm vibrate on the speaker and make noise. And we explained that in the previous video. So now let's take that signal and we're gonna have to feed it into a special circuit that allows it to be able to control an ignition coil. Uh, the reason why it needs to go through another circuit is to be able to make it amplified enough to saturate and collapse the ignition coil to make the audio uh, come out. So we need to amplify a signal like that to be able to activate that transistor to turn that primary windings on and off to create the high voltage arc at the frequency to generate the noise. And I talk about how sound is generated all in my previous video. Go watch that if you guys want to learn more about that kind of stuff before watching this one. So I'm going to show you two different circuits. One is a circuit that I use for the high voltage music player that's kind of like a piano which is what I used to build this guy right here, which is uh, got a bunch of keys and stuff so you can play kind of like music. And the other one I'm gonna show you is the one I use to amplify my guitar amp signals, which is this guy right here. So starting with that little keyboard, I use this circuit here and you'll notice right at the core of it, there is a 555 timer. Now, 555 timers are great. They are very inexpensive. They're relatively robust and be used for a wide variety of applications. In this case, I'm gonna use them to generate a frequency signal. 
uh, at various adjustable frequencies to generate the notes that I want to do. Again, I talk about how we generate notes at different frequencies in my previous video. So the goal here is to essentially make that 5-5 timer generate that signal, which it will output on pin number three there when it has the circuit built just like this. Um, and there's one variable resistor in there, right? there. And now that variable resistor, when you change its position, it will change the frequency it's outputted from the 555 timer. And that is one of the primary functions of the 555 timer is to be able to have an adjustable frequency output. So then I take that signal and I put it through a button, which you press and send that signal through to the transistor, which turns the transistor on and off which in turn turns the coil on and off in the primary windings of that ignition coil, and it will generate a high voltage arc at the same frequency as the 555 timer. So inside of here, you guys can see my circuitry inside. It's all messy. And I got 555 timers here, which are in that same circuit that you can see in that diagram. So both the variable resistor wires and the signal output wire are coming out of here, and they go to my little switchboard here. So here is the variable resistors for the different 555 timers, and here is the button that sends a signal to the ignition coils, which are all the way around the outside edge of this thing. So the pulse on the 555 timers, they come through these switches here, and as soon as you push one of these buttons, they will output that pulse to the ignition coils, creating that note. So what about my guitar amp that I made? That is just simply uh, another type of amplifier circuit. It actually is just a simple amplifier circuit. And that looks like this guy right here. Okay, so for those of you who are interested in learning how I made this one here, here is my diagram I just drew up for you quickly. So essentially the job of what all of this does is the signal comes in here and then it goes through one transistor to get amplified. Once that signal's amplified, it gets sent to a second transistor. It takes a signal and it converts it further. This also helps us scrub out some of the little static noise uh, that occur back here, as only strong enough signals to pass through to this point uh, actually get amplified strong enough to send out a stronger signal. This also helps to insulate the higher voltage side from the low voltage side so that we don't have any shoot back occurring. So the signal from this transistor gets sent down to the primary control transistor. Now you'll probably notice that these two transistors are the same. This one is a bit different. This is an IRFP260N. These have a much higher voltage rating. Um, that's why I used uh, this kind of MOSFET here. You don't have to use this exact setup that I have. You can free to modify this as uh, you wish, but um, yeah, feel free to take a screenshot or whatever of this and modify it and make it work however you want to. If you don't really have any circuit experience or not enough to really understand how this circuit's supposed to operate and what all this means, uh, this isn't really a great first project to take on. Uh, there's a lot of simpler stuff. Uh, it might even be better just to try to build like uh, a 555 timer uh, uh, amplifier circuit and tie it into like a speaker or something the first time just to, to see you know what it sounds like or something like that. Just I just really wouldn't recommend somebody who, who's just getting to electronics to try to tackle something like this. I don't want you guys to electrocute yourself and it's totally possible. And I've, I've electrocuted myself multiple times unintentionally and it always hurts. And every time I do, you always risk the potential of, of getting a fatal injury. So be careful. So everyone that stuck around to this point, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing how I built my high voltage music players. Uh, please feel free to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more kind of cool stuff like this. Uh, take it easy, guys. Stay creative.